Well, my beloved church family, let's wade right into it. And for those of us who are already in it, let's go ahead and get in a bit deeper. What does God say about racism? Like in every matter of life when we need the truth, the truth, the real answers. We Christian disciples of Jesus must turn to the teachings of the Lord that are revealed in the sacred scriptures. And here, together, we're going to do exactly that. Because, you see, one of the greatest weapons of the evil adversary is division. The enemy has figured out every way imaginable to divide humanity. Since virtually the beginning of our human experience, humanity has fallen into the evil traps of division based on the color of a person's skin or our ethnic origin, our socioeconomic status, or the political power of influence, or, or, or. I'm not saying that we aren't each unique, or that we should somehow strive for a bland, monotonous culture where there are no differences. Precisely the opposite. Our differences are glorious and beautiful and celebrated by God as we are each differently and beautifully made. But our differences must not be cause for dividing us from one another. And they must no longer be the immoral excuse assigned for the sin of inequality. While racism has always been an issue in this country, the fact is, it is an issue in every country. This divisive mindset is not unique to the United States, because sadly, in some form or another, divisiveness is practiced everywhere on the planet. Last week, I made a public statement on Facebook in early response to the horrific death of George Floyd. My statement on my own personal Facebook page was that we are all together one human family. All of us, all. Because the fact is, there is only one human family. People are lovingly created by God with white skin, black skin, brown skin, yellow skin, red skin, or any other color skin. We have different ethnic backgrounds. But each and every one of us are part of the same family, the human family. The Bible says that every human is created in the image of God, that God created every one of us and that we're equal in his sight it is the master of evil the tempter the celebrant of oppression not god but it is the adversary who seeks to divide and tempt to sinfully elevate according to skin color ethnicity gender, financial means, practices of love, or any other way that you can dream up to divide people or set one higher than another. God created us equal to live in harmony with one another. It is the evil that opposes God who sought to introduce and keep division in the human experience of life with one another. In God's plan of redemption, there is no division. 
John 3.16, that verse that we are, of course, always quick to put in front of the cameras whenever we want to do evangelistic world, uh, evangelistic work. That verse of John 3.16 says the entire world, for God so loved in the world. It says that whosoever believes, whosoever, that is a universal invitation. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, Holy and Sacred Scripture talks about how Jesus laid down his life for everyone. Everyone means everyone, the entire human family. This satanically inspired way we have of dividing and overpowering ourselves through racism and prejudice, discrimination, it makes a mockery of what Christ did on the cross. Jesus faithfully and obediently went to that cross to die for the sins of each and every cherished child of God invited to kneel and received grace upon grace. The fact is, the God of the universal cosmos, the God of life and death and life hereafter, the God of your heart and soul and my heart and soul is a God of liberation. Liberation from sin, liberation from isms. These holy verses were not written to people with only light skin, but to every person of any skin color. We are part of the human family, which means we are born into both the same struggle. My heart and soul aches and cries out for justice again for black children of God because they are still hurting and because they are my family and before God they are your family as well and as one family together we have been born into the same calling to hope and not just hope for hope's sake but hope as a foundation for working together for justice and peace in shared mutual equality and love and advocacy and respect and power together as one family. Fellow disciples of Jesus, our Lord and Savior told you just as much as he told me, just as much as he told the very first generation of disciples, you are in this world. You are my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Teach what I have taught and commanded of you. Love one another. And if you love me, you will keep this teaching and do it. If you don't have a testimony of God's love for every member of this human family, if you don't have a servant heart for the celebration of each child of God, if you don't have a spirit that cries out for justice and mercy and a life free from the bonds of fear, then it is the same lie that sought to be told across the earth before. As we are wading pretty deep in this together, I choose to move. To move by wading deeper into the truth proclaiming waters of holy baptism with the Spirit of God that loves me and loves you and loves every single member of the human family. 
rather than get bogged down with chains into the sinful pits of evil with those who mock and defy God's will, a will of love and of equality for the one human family. Amen. Good morning. With the prayers this morning, I'm going to start with Psalm 130. Please join with me in prayer. Out of the depths I cried to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, children of God, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. We thank you, O Lord, for in your loving wisdom you created one human family with a rich diversity that enriches our communities, our churches, and our lives. We pray to you, O Lord, that we always recognize each member of this human family of every race and nation, of every culture and language, as being made in your image and beloved by you with worth and dignity. We pray to you, O oh Lord, that we may envision a way forward to heal the racial divisions that deny human dignity and the bonds between all human beings. We pray to you, O oh Lord, that we may affirm each person's dignity through fair access for all to economic opportunity, housing, education, and employment. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may have eyes to see what is possible when we reach out beyond fear, beyond anger, to hold the hands of our sisters and our brothers. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your call and challenge to us that we may reveal your teachings and your love through our actions to end racism and to proclaim that we are all your children, heirs to your sacred creation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please join with me in praying that prayer the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve your neighbors. Amen.
wife shy. 